Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. Today I'll be doing a keyboard review that is long overdue. The KBD Fans KBD67 Lite R1. There has been much hype around this entry keyboard and for good reason too. It's a 65% gasket mounted keyboard with an ABS case and polycarbonate plate. It's fully customizable with both QMK and VIA support and also features south facing hot swap sockets and per key RGB, all for around $100. After the launch, they have been sold out and stock has been going in and out. So how did I get a hold of one? I want to pause here and take this time to do a quick shout out to ShopMac.com. ShopMac.com is a site that gathers information from various keyboarding sites and aggregates it in one location. This includes anything from switches to lube and components to full-on keyboard kits like the KBD67 Lite. I happened to be browsing this at the right time and saw availability and I hopped on it really fast. So if you click on one of the categories like switches, you literally get a huge list of all these different switches currently available for purchase from many vendors out there, all in one location. You can sort through the types you're looking for and helps to organize and makes it easier to focus. Plus it helps to gather various keyboard products on group buy so you don't have to scour the internets or discussion forums to see what's going on. This includes keyboards, keycaps, and bunch of other things that seems to be on group buys nowadays. I'm not affiliated with ShopMac.com, but sites like this is great for both enthusiasts and newcomers alike, so I wanted to bring it to some attention. It's another tool that helps me to see what's out there and also makes me go broke much faster. So a small warning there for your wallets. I'll put the description of the websites below so that you could check it out on your own time. So back to the KBD67 Lite. I have the transparent case color and the R1 comes fully assembled. R2 is right around the corner and they'll come as a kit instead. Here is a better look at the polycarbonate plate, which is the standard color and the thickness. The kit even includes cherry screw and stabilizers, which come pre-clipped and looped. That is amazing. As mentioned before, the PCB is a kale hot swap in south-facing LED configuration and features per-key RGB for those that really love the colorful effects. Once you undo some screws and remove the top frame, you can see how the gasket mounting works on this specific keyboard. It's very unusual to see um, that instead of having gaskets on the actual plate itself, the KBD67 Lite features a molded silicone dampener that acts as both the gasket and the PCB foam. Really great idea, and I think this also helps to make the keyboard more flexible as well. Here's another look at how the gasket is literally molded straight into the silicone dampener. One thing to note about this design is that you won't be able to play around with a different gasket material, but most people don't anyways and so I think we'll be okay. For the R1 version, the PCB is the KBD67 Mark II RGB V2. Here's a closer look at the kale hot swap sockets and the individual LED for the per key RGB effect. The entire thing is then screwed together with standoffs. Usually, I intend to remove some of the center ones to increase flex and evenness, but for this, I left it alone since the PC plate is very flexible even with the standoffs, and I didn't want the PCB to sag. Once you lift the plate and PCB assembly out, you can see that the KVD67 Lite comes with a foam dampener included. This foam dampener is the same material that is included in other KBD Fans products as well. And overall, the material is nice and soft and not too flimsy either. With the case foam out, you can see the bottom tray. It's a fairly simple design with a lot of ribbing included for structural integrity. Since this is a variant of the KBD67, the side profile is a nice arch design that you see on the full-on non-light version as well. In case you're curious, the cutout for the USB port is on the rear left of the case and nice and tight. Now let's take a look at the upper frame. The frame is made of the same ABS material as the bottom tray. One thing that KBD fans did that was really nice was embed metal screw hardware so that even with repeated installation, you don't run the risk of stripping or cracking the actual plastic. There's even a small silicone dampener built into it as well. As mentioned before, the KBD67 Lite features PCB with fully integrated per-key RGB. For all you RGB fans out there, this means that the keyboard can put on a magnificent light show and has many different modes as well. You can choose from a single color or go into full rainbow RGB mode depending on what you're really looking for. So let's take a look at some of these modes.
Finally, this being a translucent case, you do see some of the RGB lighting bleed through the case even without any downfiring LEDs on the PCB board itself. Now all that has been covered, what does this thing sound like stack? The R1 version comes fully assembled and ready to use, and I could honestly say that this was one of the best sounding stock keyboards I typed on as of late. Even the cherry screw and stabilizers came pre-clipped and lubed, so the overall sound wasn't too bad. This is definitely usable right out of the box. One thing I did notice is that the lower case is pretty open, so it does have a bit of plastic hollowness, so let's do something about that. Normally for plastic cases such as this, I would normally use butyl noise dampener pads like a Dynamat. However, this is a translucent case, so I didn't really want anything ugly to show through. So for this application, I used liquid silicone to fill all the empty space between the ribs. This process isn't anything new, and many other keyboard modders have also done this before. If you're interested in the process, let me know in the comments below, and I can make a short video on the process in more detail. The silicone will cure in about 5 hours or so, and will work to fill the void and remove some of the empty sound. However, if you're looking for total absorption of noise, the Butyl Noise Dampener does work better, like Dynamat, Killmat, and some of the other ones out there in the market. Once done, the silicone is nice and solid and looks very clean as well. Silicone fillers such as this helps to create a more poppy sound since it does have the tendency to reflect sound back versus absorbing it and dissipating it entirely. One thing I had to be careful about this mod was to ensure that I leave enough space under the plate and the PCB to allow for the plate flex and travel. Fortunately, as long as you don't fill the silicone above the ribbing, you retain all the flexy goodness you see on the KBD67 Lite. Now we put everything back, ensuring that there are no clearance issues. The reassembly was a breeze and straightforward. Now let's take this for a quick spin to see how the silicone changed the noise characteristics. I think the silicone below helped to create a tighter and cleaner sound. But you didn't come here to see me pour silicone into the case, right? That's right, you came for this. What happens when you swap out the PC plate for a nice thick FR4 plate? For this board, there are a few ways to get an FR4 plate. One way is to get the plate file from KBD fans and use a service like JLC PCB to get it cut. In my situation, I purchased a prototype plate from Breadworks. They were running a group buy on these before, but I believe they still have some C stock available and that should also work fine. So let's throw the mint linears back in and take it for a typing test.
Overall, the F44 plate delivers a deeper muted thought that I really enjoy. It isn't as flexible as the PC, but for me, I think the F44 is a good balance between flex and thock. Now what happens when you throw on some sunflower tactiles and thocky MT3 caps into this? Magic. So what did you think? Did you expect to hear that from a $100 entry keyboard? I feel that the influx of great entry boards like the KBD67 Lite has really helped to bring quality typing experience to more people. I feel that as I review this today, the KBD67 Lite with the FR4 is one of the best value per performance you can get. Is it the best? I have an unbuilt portico in my hand, so we'll find out next week. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I will have more content for you in the future. Thanks.